You know what my proof is? He told me. Two o'clock in the morning, he leans over, taps me on the shoulder and says, I've had an affair with Charlotte Corman. Who asked him? When he tapped me on the shoulder in the middle of the night, I thought he wanted me. You know what it is to wake up from a sound sleep with no eyelashes and a dry mouth and hear that your husband is getting it from a woman you're not allowed to see for lunch? And you know why he told me, Bonnie? He explained it to me. We're living in a new guiltless society. You can do anything you want as long as you're honest about it. Aren't we lucky to be living in such a civilized age? In the old days, I would have gone to my grave ignorant of the wonderful and beautiful knowledge that my husband is spending his afternoons humping Charlotte Corman. When he told me I didn't say a word, I went down to the kitchen and made myself a cream cheese and jelly sandwich on date nut bread. And that was the last time in eight months that I tasted food. I estimate going four times a week, I should be through with Dr. Margulies in another year. And then, when we both think I'm ready, I'm gonna get in my car and drive off the Verrazano Bridge. Nothing personal, but I don't think we're gonna have our affair. <sighs> you hypocrite. You soul-searching, finger-smelling, hypocritical son of a bitch. Who are you to tell anybody how to go through life? What would you have done if I came in here all fluttery and blushing and, oh, Mr. Cashman, don't put your hand there. I'm a married woman. Were you going to tell me how much you respect me, admire me, and, at the moment of truth, even love me? You know damn well tomorrow you'd be back behind that counter opening clams and praying to Christ I'd never come back in your restaurant. And you know something? That's the way it should be. Forgive me for the terrible, sinful thing I'm about to say, but I happen to like the pure physical act of making love. It warms me. It stimulates me. And it makes me feel like a woman, but that's another story. That's what I came up here for, and that's what you were expecting. But don't give me. When I was nine years old, my mother ran off with a butcher, and I've been looking for someone to love ever since. I don't know your problems, and I don't care. Keep your savory swordfish succotash stories to yourself. No one really cares about anything or anyone in this world except himself. And those, there's only one way to go through your sanity. If you can't taste it, touch it, or smell it, forget it. God, how I miss my dog. He kidnapped him because he was jealous of anyone or anything I cared about. He didn't want me to have a dog or a car or a career, especially a career. He knows I'm enormously talented and he's afraid of losing me. Well, that's his problem because nothing's gonna stop me. I'm gonna make good no matter how many opportunities he tries to block. I've got it, I know that. Ask anyone on the coast. The talent's there, it's just a question of time. Do you know he had me fired from the Coconut Grove? Do you hear about that? On opening night, after the first show, when I was fabulous. Did you ever stop to wonder why I was never on the Hollywood Palace? I had a two-week contract on the Coconut Grove. They had to pay me off, but I wasn't allowed to sing the second show because he knew the producers of the Hollywood Palace were coming for the second show. And let me ask you another question. I had the best orchestrations for any nightclub singer on the West Coast, right? Then who stole the trumpet parts five minutes before showtime? That's why I had to leave the coast. He blocked every move I made. You know he once tried to have me committed to a hospital? Obviously to keep tabs on me. Well, actually it was my own fault. I was faking a nervous breakdown so he'd leave me alone. I made believe I was crazy in a department store one day and the police came with an ambulance. He must have followed me because that ambulance was there five minutes. In five minutes. <laughs> who else could have sent them?